funny because this is, you guys are the first people I ever stood up in front of uh, and asked for something. I was here uh, in LA when Dr. Cohn's um, research project came before you and asked for funding. <laughs> and I was terrified. And I never thought ever in the world I could do this, but I was never ever going to do anything like it again. And I have to let you know that since then, <laughs> I have spoken from one-on-one uh, -on -one to people who thought that, you know, stem cell research was a, a Satanistic ritual, <laughs> to being in front of a crowd of, I think, what, 5,000 or 2,000 Japanese scientists all looking at me very politely. Uh, so I said, well, what could take a mom, because I'm just the mom, uh, on a journey like this? How could, how could this happen? I mean, what happened? Well, first I wanted my daughter to be fixed. And I'd done all my research and I knew that stem cell was going to be the fix. And when you guys got ready, when you had the ability to take stem cells and turn them into skin cells, I mean skin cells into stem cells, I called you up and said, I think you're ready for me, which was even stranger, uh, was that you guys said, yeah, come on and I came on this journey. So what else <laughs> have I learned in this journey? I learned that, that my child and I, um, being fourth generation of living with a terrible disease, were not alone. I learned that there were mothers out there who were watching over their children who had much worse conditions than my child. I met my superhero, Francis, who every day when I get up and I say what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for Francis because she showed me that having lived through my world's worst nightmare, the loss of a child, that she still gets up every day and I can get up every day because she's gone through it three times. I have met some of the most fascinating people in the world. I've met research docs whose brains ought to be like the size of this building, but whose hearts were double that size. I've met people who would sit and sometimes they make jokes about you people, sorry, scientists, <laughs> about how you, you can't speak, you can't talk, but who sat with me and broke their science down to the point where I could go in and explain it to five-year-olds. I have been on vendor store, store, you know, vendor floors at conferences where they will take the time. I walk up, I go, I'm just a mom, I'm just here, I just want to know what you do. And they've taken the time to explain to me the whole process, all the processes that it takes to take stem cells from one place to another place to another place mm -hmm. to guarantee that whoever receives that, whoever receives that material, right, is getting a quality product. I have gone from being a selfish mommy and I'm telling you selfish, as in my kid, us, me, my family, to being a mother, a mother who sees a new world, not just for her children, but for so many other children, millions, thousands, in ways that you cannot comprehend because unless you've lived with the idea that every day you, stare, you share with your child could be the last. There were many, many mothers like me. And it's an interesting thing what hope does. I'll just give you one example of hope. It's part of my work. I've been advocating with people with a, a, a sickle cell who don't have parents. And I had this one particular young woman I'd been fighting for, getting treatment and making sure things were okay and meeting all her challenges. And I'd gone to the International Stem Cell Summit and I walk the vendor store, a door, I call it a store, really, because at the end of it, they don't want to carry any of that <laughs> stuff home, so they give me tons of it. I have to take boxes of it home. So I'd come home. When I got home, I found out that Lakeisha, and I'm going to use her name, Lakeisha was in the hospital and not doing well. 
So I pack up this thing, and there's this little animal that we use to be like a stem cell guy. And then there was this big, huge T-shirt. And then there were all of these, I mean, just a bunch of goodies. And I took him to the hospital room, and I said, you'll never guess where I've been, and let me tell you who I met, and let me tell you what's going on, and let me tell you what that means for you, and that, that means for your daughter who is a trait carrier, and this whole new world is coming to us. It's real, it's coming to us. She put on the t-shirt, she got the toys. She was so happy, she saved part of the stuff for her kid who was going to come and visit. We had a wonderful, wonderful chat. But her eyes were gleaming and I was crying because we were sharing the fact that there was really, really hope where we knew. And hope for her and hope for her daughter who wasn't going to carry on. So two days later, Lakeisha <coughs> got herself uh, dismissed from the hospital, packed up all her goodies, went home. I went over to visit, um, and her child was playing with the toys and, was, and the little puzzled things. I was really happy. Um, and Lakeisha was really unwell. And we talked about what stem cells meant, not just to sickle cell, but to everyone. For and when she got the cure, she could fix her knee. When she got the cure, there were all these other things that had gone wrong with her kidneys and this, that, and the other, and all that ultimately be fixed. But the best part of all was that her daughter would not have to suffer through this. So four and a half hours after I had this discussion with Lakeisha, she died. And, um, she died. And the thing about that death was, on one hand, I thought, oh my God, it, this is horrific, this is horrible, I'm not cut out for this work, I was so crushed. But then I thought, a death with hope versus a death that was just something that says, okay, I'm going and there's going to be nothing to follow me, a death with real hope. And I, I, I need you to, understand what that means to those of us who've had no hope, is that the work you do, what you, what you support, um, I know it's not measurable on a spreadsheet, but it is real and it is tangible. And um, it's like, a f it's, it's unbelievable. So thank you. Thank you so very much.